were, I'm a nerd. Were you were, were you a World of Warcraft player? Oh my god. Of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> that that was probably a dumb question. I never got into those things. Like I'm a, I'm a chess guy for some reason, but I never got into like the other I'm like a closet nerd kind of. Yeah, you like the um the Dungeons and Dragons probably prior to, you know, when, or like No, I didn't me. I didn't I didn't like, like any of that. I didn't like any of that cuz we were we were isolate uh I mean I have to be careful about <laughs> talking about certain things, but we we grew up away from all of the normal uh, social media influence, and yeah. we didn't have a TV. Uh, so basically, we just played outside and dug holes, and you know, made tree yeah, houses. And you climbed trees. <laughs> I kind of had that too, but I mean, I, I you know, I did get really into D and D, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I I used to love archery and fencing and sword play because it was all natural. But yeah. I climbed trees all the time. I was like a monkey. I used to collect, you know, frogs and take them to school. Yeah. And then let them loose. Oh, really? Yeah, because <laughs> it was, uh, I was like programmed to be in a Catholic school and I, and they were, you know, it was all programming. I hated it. Yeah. So I would like let all my frogs go or my snakes and then I'd be like, I'll save you all. And then I would get, like, collect them and then I'd get time out. <laughs> you did this in a Catholic prep yeah okay How, did they not react they probably didn't react super well to that right no they didn't okay. but they were so afraid they were like happy to have me collect them yeah. and then take them out to the pond which meant that i got you know i didn't have to be in class for an hour yeah yeah that's eventually they found out it was me <laughs> but yeah no i i played yeah world of warcraft i was actually one of the um yeah i've done crazy crazy gaming stuff what can I tell you? You know, if I, if I was in a, like, a Catholic prep school now, I would be doing all those things, and, you know, I I would, something would happen, but when I was in there then, I was uh, still, like, really shy and being a wallflower, and I didn't talk to anybody. I was scared of girls, all these things, you know? Yeah. And then I didn't, like, decide, or I didn't decide I was going to talk to human beings until after I was, like, 18 years old. That's brilliant! <laughs> That's, I didn't talk until I was eight. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's brilliant. That's a sign of, like, somebody who's actually, like, witnessing what's going on and thinking yeah. to himself. I was, um, just, I was just watching. But then the thing is, is I, you know, after all this observing, I wanted to have somebody to talk to, you know, about all this stuff. And then everyone's like, no, 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 that's all nonsense. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll become... another 18 years being quiet. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I guess I'll become an alcoholic now. So that's, <laughs> that's basically what I did uh, for the, about five or six years and... And now yeah. I'm just now I'm just here, you know. I'm not not an alcoholic anymore, but I am actually yeah. freeing the tongue and you know, talking about all this this these strange happenings. Well, I think you saw stuff um, from right from the get go. Like, I think you were mm, you were seeing a lot of things. I probably was, but I didn't have any frame of reference, and I had literally nobody to correspond with whatsoever. Yeah, which so, made it worse. It, yeah, it makes it worse because then you just think you're delusional or something, or you think, yeah. oh, maybe you know, maybe all of my senses are completely lying to me. Then you try to turn into like a schizophrenic or a, a bipolar personality. Well, the religious programs too, when you're put in them, they make it a lot harder because they'll demonize you. So, you know, you will then become the antichrist or one of the, you know, you're just yeah. It's, so it's yeah. actually. And which is bizarre when you think about it, because in, in essence, you think that if you look at the history of religion, it comes from all the metaphysical stuff. So why are they denying it? You know, why are they like, it just doesn't make any sense. At the very least go, oh, yes, well, this is the stuff that we were made out of, too. If only we decided to go this route. Yeah, right. Well, and I want to clarify first, because there are people who I don't want to offend with religious stuff. Yeah. So I want to say first that I do agree with the Christ consciousness idea that is within us, but I disagree yeah. with the way that uh, the churches have been used to turn yes. people against each other. I disagree with that. Yeah. Um, I totally agree. But yes, uh, as far as what the church does, what I, f- what I found out by myself was that it was built in a way that it gets stronger with attacking. Every attack on it makes it stronger. So you just don't... The only thing that doesn't make it stronger is maybe light humor. So that's kind of how I deal with it here and there. But I don't... You don't want to attack. It, it makes the beast get... 
bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the fifth element, right? So the the planet of death is coming up towards Earth, and the more that they fire ammunition at it, the bigger it grows. I don't know about that. Is that a movie? I don't know about it's it. It's a movie, The Fifth Element, yeah. I haven't it's watched not. it. More like a documentary, but um, <laughs> it's like some goofy. Yeah, yeah, like, let's kill it, and then, yeah, that makes sense. It just keeps... It just makes it stronger. <laughs> right. And that's exactly, yeah, what you're saying, which is true. And also the, you know, the Chinese finger trap, you know, you, tr- you try harder and harder, and it gets tighter and tighter as you pull. Yeah. It's yeah. the same oh, kind yeah. of, it's the same kind of thing, so... And also, when you have family members that are involved, then you have to just be careful, and, you know, it's... I just... Yeah. I know I know how it is, and I... I uh, do my best to remain <laughs> Well, that's nice. why being quiet is good, right? Because then, it, you know, I'm, when you're growing up, you really don't, that's probably the best. I was, I had the same thing. I was like, I am not, I'm going to say a single <laughs> word. Because right. I am going to end up in that funny hospital down there. Oh, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to hang out with my frogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you learn early on, like, I don't know. I just, I just learned that whatever it was that I had to offer wasn't generally wanted. I did. I didn't even know what I had to offer, but I know that it wasn't. It wasn't liked. And then I, I knew also that the alternative, which I, you know, was trying to force myself to fit, also I didn't like that. So I was like, well, they don't want me, and I don't want what they're giving. So where the hell am I supposed to go? Yeah. So yeah. then you're on the periphery of something that you know, for in the meantime, didn't really even exist that much. You yeah. had to find it. You become a wallflower. That's the solution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be, yeah, a very unique looking wallflower. <laughs> yeah, to to select few that are watching you, but <laughs> yeah, it's funny. <laughs> to everybody else, you're invisible, as far as I can tell. Yeah, or you're shunned, right? Because they will make it uncomfortable for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, anytime you're challenging somebody's worldview, then of course you know you're you're poking and prodding around, and they don't like that. Just the fact that you don't fit in the first place no. is challenging their worldview. Whether they know right. that or not, that's what's happening, and they have to have some sort of a reaction to it. Yeah, and I mean, if you think about, are, are we are we recording right now? We've been. Okay, <laughs> so if you think about it, this is something that's really fascinating, and I used to talk, I remember I had this one teacher named Mr. Finnegan, who was really great, because he almost was like a... Uh, a guardian to me because he saw all this crazy stuff going on with me and how difficult it was and and how the school kept wanting to excommunicate a kid really <laughs> like, he had never heard of that before <laughs> he was gonna excommunicate the child oh that's hilarious that's really good so you know <laughs> he's the only he's wait wait, wait what, was, I, was this for like bringing frogs in or was this something else no this is just because they would see all of this paranormal stuff happening that was, you mm. know, around me. Like, it was like wherever I was going, this paranormal stuff was happening or it was coming out of me or whatever, right? Okay, okay. And then they couldn't handle it. And, of course, also because I was – back then, I would speak out about their lies. I would say, no, you're lying. That's not true. Um, things like that because I did come in with memories. So even you know, even, as, a, even as a child, you would do this? Even as a child, I would do it. Yeah. So – I'm sure, well, yeah, <laughs> that's not going to work very <laughs> No, and they couldn't handle it, but, you know, so while the school was trying to find a way to excommunicate a child, um, or at least have me spend the majority of my time with the principal or in the nurse's office, um, which is where I spent the majority of the time a lot, <laughs> um, because they discovered that sending the priest didn't work because I would just refuse to speak to him and I refused to call him father. Mm-hmm. Um because I'm like, you're not my father, and you're no, nobody's father on this planet. Like, you're, <laughs> like, Theor- no. Theoretically, right? They're not supposed to be anybody's father. No, and uh, <laughs> you know, they're not, exactly. So I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. So they realize that. So when they were trying to, you know, excommunicate me, I would have this um, this great this great teacher, Mr. Finnegan, who was really wonderful. And he would be the one protecting me and talking to me. And I would talk to him. I said, you know... And this is me as a kid, right? I'm trying to explain to the, to an adult teacher. I'm like, you know, the nature of reality here <laughs> is that <laughs> right. whatever, whatever you think, whatever you perceive is in essence how you will relate to reality and how reality will relate to you. I said, so it's not so much that 
you know, Copernicus is correct or anybody else. It's not so much the world is round or flat or anything. Yeah. This nature of reality doesn't isn't like that. It's not fixed the way we think it's fixed. That's, that's why it can be a whole. That's a no. That's a no. No, you can't. You can't be talking like that. Right, but it, I could with him. How else, he, how else do you threaten people with hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he, he was on. Um, he, thank goodness I had him because because I could talk to him, and that's where he was the one that said that I was a philosopher. I didn't even know how to say the word. Um, when he, I was like, I'm a philo, who? I'm a philo, <laughs> philo pastry. Philos. <laughs> a philos, yeah. And, <laughs> but he was like, you can't speak like this. Like, you cannot speak like this. I'm here, you can speak to me like this, but if you try and do this. So he was actually warning me, like, what I, how far I could go, you know? And I'm like, I can't help myself. Like, I'm not... I'm not okay with what I'm seeing. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> there are many what, and what did he say to here. that? Like, what did he say to that? Did he, did he just, well, he was he just didn't trying to protect know. you. He was like, I don't know what to do with that. Because <laughs> 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 his, his mind, he goes, you realize that our minds are not like your mind and where you come from. And he's, and he said, so you have to explain things to us like we're children. Because he said, we know that you, even even the way that you relate to things and the things that happen around you, he's like, many people witness things that are, are really typically scary for them. Because they don't have a means by which to be able to understand them. Mm-hmm. So there's no basis. It's almost like, you know, it, it is kind of like in, in, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie The Matrix, oh, yeah. where the... Was the little boy with the with the was it a fork or a spoon or a knife? I think it was a little girl, but it was a spoon. It was a little girl. Yeah. yeah, it's like that. So if you get a kid who can bend a spoon, but nobody's ever seen that in their lives and they can't comprehend it, and it's how how you interplay and interface with reality, but nobody's gonna understand it because there's nothing for them to understand. There's no uh, root. There's no reference point for there's it. There's no reference. Yeah, right. So then you're going to go into all of the programs of, like you said, hell and, you know, all the rest of it. Like, this is this is from the demon. This is, like, the devil. This is from uh, whatever, right? This is madness. This They're all is- tied in together. It's very simple to see when you look into it. The economic system, the religious system, um, those are the main yes. two. But the whole, all of it, the consumerism, those three... Not only, and then add in the sort of caste system that has everybody divided against each other. It's a very like yeah. simple thing when you actually look at it, but for some reason, I guess the fear programming keeps the vast majority of people from even wanting to take the first step because it's like I was saying before. It's like you got this giant ball of yarn, and it takes one little tug to get it going, but that yeah. one tug is like the most scary possible thing ever for most people. So right. the ball just stays intact. Well, and which reminds me of. You know, because I was thrown into the Catholic school when I was young for programming, it reminds me of what they used to instill in the children, which was if if you start doubting anything, if you start questioning anything, basically this God that sits on a big throne will uh, he's gonna he's gonna get you with a lightning bolt. You know what I mean? And you're not Harry Potter, so it's not like you're (laughs) (laughs) you're not gonna end up with a nice little scar on your forehead. (laughs) Right. <laughs> but you know, that's those are children. Those are little kids, okay, sitting in a classroom with their eyes like Yeah. That's telling them, Oh my god, if I think for myself or I think outside the box or I question you, I I'm gonna be incinerated. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's really it's really uh it's astounding. I mean I, I, I saw this stuff when I was I don't know, I think when I was early 20s because when I was a child I didn't I didn't really I didn't like the Bible very much even though it was around and you know we our parents had us read it I didn't really like it I didn't like how the the God was so like mean he was just, mean. Just, he's just an <laughs> asshole basically just killing everybody <laughs> right. and then sending his cohort to go kill more like, yeah yeah out there and slay that city <laughs> right right and and I always tried to take this the side of well, there's a deeper meaning in the Bible, and because 
if your family members are all stuck on it, then you have to make you have to make it make some sort of meaning. So that's what I always did. I was like, well, okay, it's mostly symbolic or all symbolic, and you know, get what you can out of it, like the golden rule or something. Like there are good things in there. Yeah. I, I I there are some good things in and. I don't, I don't find the need to read it myself. Like I tell my dad, I'm like, you're a moral person from inside yourself, yeah. from out the gate, and it has nothing to do with any rule set that's in a book or not in a book. Yeah. It's a moral compass that you have in your spirit. Yeah. And you don't need to be taught it. It's there. You need to be nurtured, and you need to nurture it so it has a form of expression because it's going to be the way it guides you through life. If you can't listen to it, you're not going to have it as a guide. You're going to have other things replace it so that it guides you. Right. Which and you, is why programming you, works. You were, yeah, you were, taught, you were taught to ignore your own inner teacher from the get-go. Oh, yes. Punish badly because, boy, I'll tell you, they really like to, they like to punish that. <laughs> <laughs> and they like to start when you're young because if they can't get you when you're young... Right? This is why they have the education system. They get you when you're young. It's like Hitler said, right? You got the nation then. You can do what you want. Yeah. So, prime them when they're little. Because then you teach them how to be afraid to think. So they won't think. It's just not It's not a pretty world that it creates. I mean... No. It's it's a world of drones and zombies and, and you know... I, I, for the longest time, I didn't even believe anybody else existed, really. Like, it felt like I was simply just wandering around, and, you know, nobody was like me whatsoever, so I just might as well just keep wandering, because what else are you going to do, you know? But That's then, actually pretty brilliant. Yeah, but th- but then, like, uh, I I finally started making the videos when I broke up with, with the wife, and that was a big turning point in my life. And I kind of became free at that point to actually be myself, whereas I hadn't done that for the entire time. And then I was like, oh, there are some other people. Like, there's there's one in this city. There's one in, across over in Iceland. You know, like, there are some over... There are some, some out there, I guess, but... <laughs> but don't you think it's fascinating what you said? Um, where you questioned whether there was anybody else really there. Yeah. Because that is a really really important question and i not to freak people out or anything but that says that you're able to see through the hologram in many ways and how even people relate to it Mm -hmm. so and this is what it goes back to the nature of reality right what is the nature of reality how does that how do we interface with a technology that is so sentient that it essentially it is it is creating what we want it and what we perceive it to be and so if you mass consciousness together with that then you have this what what people think is you know this is why this is why whenever somebody says let's prove something in this in this realm it's ridiculous i know <laughs> whatever that is but, right? you, but you can't you can't do anything about it like you know no. Because I'll sit here and I will I will take like a thousand different stances over one uh, little argument and I'll I will prove each of those right, but then right. like they won't. I, you can't translate that mindset to somebody who doesn't have it. It's, it doesn't doesn't go. No. No. Be- and because I I even struggled with this concept that I would I was a fence sitter because I I was accused of that before of being a fence sitter because I wasn't always like holding these firm like political stances or things and I was like. No, I have a very distinct uh, stance within all of this, but I also have the ability to see all the sides and all the angles. Right. Doesn't and mean doesn't mean that I agree with all of the terrible things and this and that, but it means no. that I, I'm aware of what's behind them. And you're actually you're looking through all of them. Mm-hmm. And you're realizing that maybe the answer doesn't. It isn't in all of them. Maybe the answer is not in any of them. <laughs> you know, and that's yeah. why you have to sit in the fence. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is on this fence. Like I call it, I call it, I call it the razor blade. Like you're dancing on a razor blade and that's, it is what it is. Like there are words floating around and you can attach words if you want, but they have nothing to do with the blade itself. Like it's a, it's a construct that it's, it's called, it's the projection system is all it is. It totally is a projection system. And that's, and that really is, you know, what's happening here. It is that projection system. 
that people are living and they're feeding and they're interfacing with, but mm-hmm. is it real? Mm, you know? No, I mean, I, I had, I had this, I had this, being real. I had this a long time ago where I was like, okay, I, I realized that past and future were both bogus nonsense things. And then I try to tell people and they're like, what are you talking about? Because like, you can't, I mean, it, it's, it goes back also to the ego construct thing and whether you still believe that's real. Because if you still believe that's real, then this idea that a future and past are fake, so to speak, means that you're not even existing in the first place. Like, if you haven't found that deeper spiritual aspect yeah. of yourself. Sure. Sure. And I mean, and even the way that people perceive a past and, a, and all of it, because experience and evolution in life or you know you are it, it goes go back even to Descartes and all of them and Plato and um Socrates where you know they were playing with all of these ideas where if you can, if you think it then it's real and if you, you know, I think therefore I am <laughs> I think therefore I am um right. but am I you know past present future simultaneous um, experiences of how you perceive evolution or how you perceive your own personal evolution of it all. So your one thought now in the one thoughtness is connected to every thought that ever was. Mm. And it all comes down to one converging point of what you are in the now. Right. The now is how you perceive everything and how it's happened. And it's malleable as well. It's malleable. It's not totally. like... You're not stuck. That's what I. That's why I try. I try to tell people that that have this fixed Earth model in their mind, and I'm like, it's not a fixed Earth model. There's not any. No. <laughs> it's not like that at all. It's not. It's not round or flat or anything. Like, no, it, it could literally be a five foot bubble that the thing is projected on the screen, and then as soon as the thing comes to the five foot, it comes through, and then it becomes a physical object. It'd be could just as easily be that as not that. Totally. Absolutely, 100%. And that's exactly, exactly what I was trying to explain to Mr. Finnegan. That, you know, it's how we perceive it, that that what is created in how we experience it, that's what it is. It isn't that it is that. It's not, yes, let's prove that it's round. If I tell you long enough that the world is round and show you globes everywhere you look and put them in every classroom and then put you in an institution that's just going to ensure programming of what I want you to experience reality to be, then you're going to go outside that door and you're going to be experiencing reality according to that. Yeah. Those are the limitations by which you will create. Well, because also like... If you uh... accept it. There has there has been okay I, I you know I have memory wipe as well I didn't come in here with any full memory like you say you have but uh, as far as I can tell there has there has been no uh, defense to this like um, sort of like asshole push let's push our fact model on top of you guys like I haven't seen anybody saying like look you guys are fucking retards like that has nothing to do with how the world works or how this place works. I haven't seen, that's why I've remained quiet because like I hadn't noticed any friends running around yet. So I was like, all right, well, I'm not, not going to bother with this. It's not worth it. No, no, but it is, I mean, it is challenging because the thing is when you are amongst a stream of consciousness that is connected to others who also have their stream of consciousness there is a type of infection that's going on. You know, there is a type of infection of co-creation and whatever is being programmed in that. And then whether you want to or not, you are being affected, even if it's on a subconscious level. Mm -hmm. So you are in essence being plugged into that version. And that's why it's really important to try and see it for what it is so that you can unplug and maybe get out of the box and start realizing that you can create your own version. Right, right. Your own senses, your own way of, you know, connecting to what you perceive outside of everything. Right, right. And that, that I think that's an, a very important point because depending on your level of fear really depends on your level of how much you believe you're actually influencing because you might as well just believe, well, I am the, the almighty himself and I can manage all this stuff. And maybe that's incorrect and you try it out and it doesn't work, but it's, 
it's how much fear you have leading up to that it depends on whether you're like a peon or a pawn on you know the black and white or you're a, a, a slightly larger player or you're just totally involved with all of it and you're maybe you have no label at all who knows like but you could be any of it it really doesn't matter or maybe you decide to be you know like a nomad just like um you know kung fu <laughs> Uh, just like, you know, people who who take on all of the elements of creation and then just test everything and they just do and, and they don't, they choose not to live with that fear. Yeah. Because what is there to be afraid of? What there, is there, there to be afraid there, of? There, there isn't, but... It, it, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even remember what the fear was like, but back when it was there, it was like a... The, the the projection is the re- it becomes the reality even if it's not physically playing out and you're you're experiencing the fear chemical reactions as if it were happening totally so like even if the boogie monster isn't popping out of the closet internally for you you're feeling like it is totally yeah so, so i think that's that's one of and the and then big you can blocks. manifest it because of that fear yeah if you can think it it exists so if you if you you know want to really perceive it or if you're tired or exhausted physically, you usually become vulnerable to fears that you otherwise wouldn't become vulnerable to. Mm -hmm. And so this is where your subconscious starts creeping up through the soil of your mind and it just like all things start popping up out of that soil, you know, that you didn't even know were there. Right. And you find the boogeyman in the night. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you you find that you find those things if you meditate, like it's like I, I see it for myself personally you you have to like look into your closet and find out what you have in there mental wise because yep. it's going to it's going to inform your present moment in some way shape or form whether you know it's there or not. Yeah. So you got to look into it. You got to like take the time, med- either meditate or do whatever helps your mind to quiet down a little bit so it's not just surface peripheral stuff and like look yep. in it's probably going to be a nasty place cuz you haven't looked in there for a while but <laughs> you got to look in there. Or what is the, you know, how um, people suffer from having a lot of clutter in their mind and it's a lot of chatter? Mm-hmm. So what, what then is that? What is the sum total of all that chatter? Is it their, their own mind's thoughts? Or is it the chatter of everything and everybody <laughs> in that stream of consciousness? That would be faulty uh, wiring, I would think. <laughs> Like, I remember, I remember talking to somebody that was helping me and, you know, feel what that would be like because I don't don't have that chatter in my mind. And, um, and I know a lot of people do, right? That it's just like constantly like, (laughs) and it's it's like millions of voices talking so much so that you can't hear anything fluid. You can just hear like, (laughs) you know, like a static. Yeah. 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 And I was like, wow, that's fascinating. So. If I go and I tap in, I can get a sense of what that's like. And what's that and what that is like to me feels like you are plugged into the chatter consciousness of, of everything. Mm. Because you haven't really isolated yourself or like removed yourself from the co collective of that consciousness. You know, and this is what we're talking about. When you're able to do that, then you're sort of outside of it. Yeah. And then you can see more because you're on the fence. Right. That doesn't. Yeah. That. I've never had. I've never experienced that chatter to that extent to where it feels like I'm feeling everybody else's uh, thoughts, which I wouldn't. I don't think I would enjoy very much. <laughs> but I. I mean, I have had. My own mind has been at a point before where it was just blah 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 and then this side was blah blah in the opposite direction then you know it's like a seesaw teeter-totter and i'm sitting here going back and forth or i don't i don't do that as much if at all now but i know what that feels like and that's not fun either but i think as an you know as an empath and i think you were an empath too um i think we suffered i know i suffered when i was a child of not being able to um I didn't even know how, how to deal with it because because it was like being pulled into my my membrane. It was being pulled into my own my own membrane, so that I couldn't keep it out. I had to learn ways of um, utilizing energy 
to be able to keep things out because I would actually literally feel what they were feeling, see what they were seeing sometimes Mm. and experience what they were experiencing. And if I was in a mall or in a public place, um, I, I was autistic. It was making me autistic. It was that bad. Like it was like, like you just couldn't focus on anything and you're just like all over the place. Yeah. It was like, I couldn't even, um, like I really, really had to learn how to work with energy because it was so, it was battering me. It was assaulting me so badly that I couldn't, at times it was blinding me. Like I was actually being blinded. You know, for me, I was not always empathic, so to speak. And I still even now wouldn't necessarily say that I'm empathic. Uh, like before I had this, this weed experience that basically all this reality showed me very directly that it was just a load of horse shit. Like it was just all pretending. And then I was like, okay, well, so it's all been, you know, I didn't just say, okay, calmly. Like I was like, oh my God, you know, I was freaking out for basically for eight years or something afterward. I had to integrate that experience, but it was, it was like, uh, you know, like people, take acid or they take dmt or whatever and they are like i had a good trip right i saw this and that on my trip and i i'm like no i smoked weed i I saw that the reality was fake and i came back and i'm still in that fucking reality like i have not left that fake reality you know yeah i'm still i'm still here it's just that you know now 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 it's sort of holding together a little better than it was before but it's still the same place yeah and and that's more real you know, because because it is like some it is a dream. This is a dream. Yeah. This is a dream and we're all dreaming and we're dreaming it according to you know, what we've agreed to connect with in dreaming. So, you know, you've connected to every single being that you've ever known from the beginning of your inception, wherever that was, okay? And then in every connection that you made, you agreed to dream the dream in that way. Sure. So by the end of so many billion connections, <laughs> you know, and dreaming the dream that came from an original dreamer. So it's both our dream and somebody else's dream or something else's dream. Yeah, right. There's definitely a, an aspect that is not my own, so to speak. Right. Right. You know, and here you have it. This isn't real, really. It, it is, you know. This is why, you know, you got to take things with a grain of salt and, and not really, um, and not to, not to say, not to minimize anybody's experience of it, but but I always take things with a grain of salt because I have to, because even, <laughs> even in school, right? I'm like, oh, this is bullshit. Um, but, you know, according to, to this dream, I need this kind of a certificate to do this right <laughs> all right because that's the that's the rules here until i can no longer need this part or this aspect of it so okay i'll do it i'm in there but i play with it i play with reality and i challenge everything mm-hmm. and i push it to the limit i push things that most people would be they would be scared shitless to do because they would think that they would get kicked out yeah right 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 or that they would cause something but i always push the envelope <laughs> And I just play and I see how far I can take it because I know this is really not real. I mean, it's real, but not real. Yeah. And, and like the, the weird thing about that is that at least for me, uh, you know, I have this understanding that to say something like that, this is really not real. It has to be contrasted with something that is real. And, and it's, it's ironic at the same time because like I don't have a memory of a thing that is real, but I know that there is a, a real, so to speak. And that this actually ha- is connected to that, even yeah. though this is really, really fake, you know, like not fake, but just like, it's dream time space. It's like, you know, it's, yeah. it disappears the second as it's happening. Like, how do you right. not, how do you not notice that? Yeah. And it disappears as we speak. Yeah. So it's gone. That's like why people are talking about billions of years ago and I'm just like, <laughs> of <laughs> maybe like a, a millionth of a second is like, that's your, your distant past, you know? Like, yeah. And our recognition of how we perceive time in the first place is bizarro. Yeah. Okay, that's bizarre. I mean, this this is why I have I laugh with science makes me laugh. And the word science itself and physics and everything that is attributed to like whatever they pretend to think that they have or they know 
I mean, even as a kid, I used to laugh. I used to laugh, at, you know, when I was really little in class, and they'd say, this is science, and I'd be laughing. Off. <laughs> oh, my God. Just like, they'd be like, what is so funny? I'm like, that's funny. <laughs> you guys don't know science or, or physics or anything. <laughs> yeah. You know, you've like, you've had to find a way to, you know, make, make something that is not provable, not anything, it's just an experience we're having in a dream, a dream within a dream within a dream. Mm -hmm. You've had to find a way to make it into a, quote, science, to create a world of something that you can touch when you really can't touch anything. Um, and then to tell yourself that you're okay, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Look, one plus one equals two but really it equals three but no i'm gonna tell myself it just equals two i'm okay i'm gonna be all right wait why does one plus one equal three again well why not oh. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. who, what is a one anyway what is a one to a one yeah right, well, right. i mean a one to a one can be this <laughs> you know no no I mean? they're they're these or maybe like this twin tower style right <laughs> or maybe like this we need to so, be able to have an 11 for 911 so we'll put them upright. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, uh, yeah. I I remember when I was little, something used to happen with um the the you know, the material stuff because I could see through things and it was it, it is a hologram. But something used to happen when I would walk. And when I would walk, I because all my senses to this reality weren't like everybody else's senses. I was actually like coming into the dream I guess you could say right mm -hmm. so everything I was getting to know how everybody created the dream part of sensing it and experiencing it which means that for me it wasn't what everybody else was living I had to still get to that place so mm -hmm. when I would walk okay so the earth the ground would be here I would look down to the ground, but the ground to me looked like it was down here and it was sort of hollow too, right? <laughs> so at my foot would go through and I would see my foot going through there. So I never had the, the, the right, you know, <laughs> like you would watch me walking. So like you're, it feels like you're like wading through mud or something? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Until I could figure out a way. I, oh I man, could, you know. that sounds like it, I would get dizzy, I think. Well, it was dizzy because I, <laughs> My whole, um, my whole, quote, body here, I had to sort of get used to the interface of this mm -hmm. because it wasn't natural. I was learning the dream. Yeah. So it was very <laughs> sweet. There were times when people would see me walking and it was like, <laughs> or I would just like trip in thin air because really the ground wasn't here. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. I was to figure it out. That's funny. I you know I've looked for like glitches like that myself, you know I've tried to like fake out something or like jump through a wall, not jump through a wall but like I've never been able to do it. I've I've always like everything has kind of generally stayed put and everything, but I always feel like it has the potential to just do some screwy things. Well, just your your own your own atoms would have to spin at a high rate, higher than the rate of this quote matter. Because this matter, everything here is vibrating at a certain rate. Mm -hmm. So what's happening now with the universe or the infiniverse or whatever, um, it's all um, increasing and accelerating. So it's changing the original frequency of everything, of all matter. But back then when we were grown up, it was a lot slower. So your frequency matches the frequency of everything around you, of all matter in, in um, inanimate objects and how you relate to it. So this is why everything stays still. Okay, so when when that frequency gets out of balance, one or the other, so either the inanimate object slows down slower, or you increase, that's when you will be able to see through the hologram. Mm. Essentially, the matter, an inanimate object, or the Earth itself, would have to stay at the same frequency frequency that it's at, and you would have to move outside of that frequency. So, should you increase your frequency, what you would see is that you would start seeing through everything. And you would see everything slowing down. If you and your frequency were to decrease, go lower than the frequency of everything around you, then what you would see is everything speeding up. 
Like it looks like it's going fast or like zooming around really fast. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh. It's interesting. I I feel like something else that I noticed about the realm is that the there's something about motion and things moving that the the given perception is inaccurate to me. It's it's there's not an actual like motion happening. It's some sort of it's some sort of trickery. I just I just I don't know how to explain it, but yes. There's there's to me there's just a stillness really and the the dream is somehow sitting it's making illusions within that. Yeah, within the projection. Yeah. Totally. I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. I mean even our concept or you know the the generic information that we've been taught or programmed with about planets and our relationship to galaxies and everything else. It's all you know, not exactly as really <laughs> as it is. So I think you're completely correct. But the that, truth though. The truth. <laughs> the truth. Yeah. It's just words like the words are they're, they're so silly. I mean I remember I, I I tell people like there was a point in my life where the spell like snapped off. Like it I felt it break inside of me, and then I was like, oh, the, the, oh, okay, okay. So was the, that before the weed? It was a, no, it was after, like, or or in between, like a whole a bunch happened in that experience. But once I came out, there was still there was like a, a slower learning. The weed mm -hmm. thing was just bam, bam, bam. Like every part of me got ripped apart. And so, when you had that experience with the weed, did you like what was your relationship at? The the experience with how you were seeing everything like so what what was it that you were able to um actually see it, i i always kept like just it, it, there was always a visual sort of thing going on so like i didn't ever go into blackness or, ch or i didn't ever go to another dimension as far as you know i've heard of them yeah. but what i did realize number one was after i first had smoked it it was a giant bong and i took like two massive hits once I yeah. felt it coming, I was like, okay, there's a freight train that's going to run my ass over, like, in five seconds. I could feel it coming, and I was like, take it back, take it back. No, I, I don't. No, no, no. You know, and, like, and then, but it was too late at that point, so, I mean, I got ran over, basically. Yeah. And, uh, cool. yeah. But then, like, I, I, I ended up, at one point, and I don't remember very much of it, but at one point, I was touching my girlfriend we were like holding hands or touching or something and I literally just went into her like we merged completely and I freaked out even more at that point because I was like thinking I was the body the whole time and I was like so like I, I completely disassociated I think at that point but I, I also remember a, another kind of pertinent point during that trip was I had this idea that I was like okay I know right now I could float up to the top of the ceiling and like float around there but I also know that if I do that, then I will be in that reality when the like the weed comes down. Like I had that thought. I don't know if it was actually correct or not, but I kind of felt like since I was still believing things and whatnot, that that could actually happen. And I was like, yeah. no, don't want to don't want to be living in the floating reality. So I'm going to not do that. Yeah. yeah. But it's true. And it could have happened. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like it could have. Because this is again, right. It goes back to um, and I mean, I, you know, I have had that happen where I was. um I couldn't control it when when it would happen to me as a kid. I would just start um, floating out, but I couldn't stop it. <laughs> I get stuck. I kid you not. I got stuck. I oh, thank goodness there was always a ceiling around because I was mortified <laughs> this was gonna happen in the middle of like outside <laughs> where there's like nothing to stop me. Because then I'm like, well, I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> And then it's, if for whatever reason, whatever is happening stops, then I'm just going to plummet to my death, right? Yeah, right. I was freaked out as a kid. I'm like, oh my God, I need, I need to have like, <laughs> I need to be strapped down to the yeah. ground. <laughs> just like the whole hold, suit. hold weights or something. <laughs> but you know, yeah, it could have happened because I can tell you it did happen to me. And then, and I didn't have control of it. I remember um, being at a birthday party with my Italian girlfriend while I was growing up. His name's Tina. Um, and I, in the middle of the party, I was so happy I wasn't finally invited to a party because I wasn't, you know, I was the weird kid, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, don't, don't invite the weird kid. <laughs> but I got invited, sure enough, right? 
I don't know if it was that I was so excited. My frequency started increasing again. Every time that happened, I'd be like, no, because something weird would happen. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. There I go. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I start floating up to the ceiling, and I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Wait, are, kids, are kids watching this? Oh, yeah. They're, of course. Like, I was like. <laughs> what? <laughs> Please describe the scene because I, w- I want to know like how, how how are they reacting like are there adults there? Yeah, yeah, her parents were there and her um cu- her uncle was there, so her mom and dad were there, her uncle was there, and um. And they you know, saw you stuck on the ceiling. Yes, everybody saw me stuck <laughs> on the ceiling, and in fact, her dad like <laughs> they're all like yeah you know we're all kids and we're like playing yeah 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 and she's got all these presents and she's opening them and everything and then all of a sudden I just start floating up and I didn't like stop and so I got the ceiling I'm stuck to the ceiling and I'm like like trying to push myself off the (laughs) ceiling you know with everything I had and it was like there was this force you know there was nothing I could do about it I was right there so her dad her mom the kids are screaming they're like ah (laughs) (laughs) it's a balloon there's a balloon up on the ceiling (laughs) it's like her mom's screaming to her husband to like Come and get me down. Come and get me down. And um, so her dad goes and gets uh, the ladder because he was a construction man. Mm-hmm. And he built houses and things like that. So he went and got the, the large ladder. And he's, like, grabbing me and trying to, like, use his strong man. Trying to use his force to get me down. Couldn't do it. <laughs> couldn't do it. No matter what he tried, he couldn't get me down. Like, this force was incredible. You couldn't fight it. It's a good thing that st- the ceiling was strong, right? So you didn't just like... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know, just crying. Get me down, get me down, get me down. So finally, like, they just had to wait it out. The kids left the room. They took them to another part of the house, and they left me on the ceiling with basically the mother there, you know. What was she doing? Was she, like, praying the rosary or something? Or what? <laughs> yeah, she, they, they were Catholic, and yeah. they were, like, besides themselves. But they had to watch me. Her dad said, there's nothing I can do to get her down. It's like, there's nothing we can do. It's just like, we've got to wait till she gets down. Yeah. And they didn't know, they didn't know how to explain it. How, Finally, old, how old were you? Oh, I think I was 10. Wow. Yeah. And how so, were your parents with this? Like, were they aware of you? Like, your... Yes. Yeah? And were they normies or were they understanding parents? No, they were... Oh, my God. <laughs> they just... Um, my, my mom... My mom was always loved the esoteric and she loved all this kind of stuff. She was just like natural at it. She was a psychic herself, um, very gifted. And, um, but I mean, you have to think they were both programmed, right? Both my parents were programmed in their way to sort of not pay too much attention or not to, um, feed it or something it was really weird because there was aspects of it all because i you know i was in the projects so they were programmed to be the way they needed to be so that it wouldn't really create a big ruckus Mm -hmm. but you know my mom my mom had a lot of paranormal experiences that she had and my dad as well so the paranormal seemed to be around us although i was sort of like the holy grail of you know the paranormal but my mom would minimize it. She would minimize it. Like, I mean, she had her abductions too, but stuff like that, where when I came down from, from the ceiling, um, my girlfriend's parents, dad put me in the car and drove me home immediately Mm -hmm. and, um, told my parents what happened. So my parents were like, they didn't know what to say. They were like, there's always weird things with this kid. Like, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so it just, you know, it just made well, it did, did, Nobody knew what to do with it. Did me. they like, I mean, try to report it to the cops or go to like get you exercise or did they try to do any like the normal methods or well, is, is there a normal method? The Catholic, I don't... <laughs> Catholic church said that I was, um, you know, I mean the Catholic church, of course, are going to say that I'm, demon possessed or that I'm like the devil they actually yeah. said that I'm the devil right. um my mother basically told him where to go <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. and um and my dad 
I mean, bless his heart. He just worked seven days a week if he could, like 12 hours a day. (laughs) He's like, screw this. I got work to do. I don't have time for people yeah. floating and all that business. And, then, and my mom <laughs> was really good at telling the school where to go. Like, you know, she had no qualms about it. She's like, this whole family's weird for fuck's sake, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. It's like Harry Potter versus the, the muggles or whatever, you know? like <laughs> Totally. Yeah. So, I mean, like, in in a way, the, the anything that was paranormal was normal to us. But we were in a community or in a society that wasn't, but I was just that much more that level up that even my parents didn't know what to do with me. Mm-hmm. So, do you have siblings? Uh, yeah, I do. I have a sister. How, how is she? Uh, sh- she's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's uh, gifted as well. Yeah. And she wants to remain hidden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is she similar as you or does she have her own like very unique sort of abilities? Um, she doesn't have any of the, uh, exterior abilities that I was in and the things that would happen. She was very much normal, actually. Very, um, she's probably the most normal one out of the family, you could say, but she's gifted. She's, her gifts are, are similar in the sense that she's really good with, you know, sensing things, Mm -hmm. but, and, and, you know, she sees a lot in dream, but she doesn't have... Uh, she's had some experiences, obviously, she couldn't help it being in the family. She had experiences that were paranormal, but but not to the huge extent. It was like I was almost like uh, genetically different, meta, like the meta gene in, my, in, in me was, you know, on fire. So, I mean, it was just things were, didn't matter where I was, really. Yeah. <laughs> Especially as a kid, because I think what happens as a kid, you're not you're not as programmed at that point. So your the way that you relate to everything is raw, and you're just you know coming in with the memory that I came in with made it really difficult for this program reality to program me. How old are you now? Um, I'm. You don't have to answer that if you don't I want. Am, I am ageless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. That's totally that's totally fine. I could probably make I a guess. Yeah. I, w- I won't, though. Well, I think a lot of people already know how old I am, but... You're like yeah. a, a billion years old? I'm a billion. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, because billion years, maybe that doesn't exist, so... <laughs> I always say I'm ageless, too. Yeah, we are ageless. I feel like, I feel like the concentrating on growing older is like literally what causes your face to wrinkle up and then you start shriveling and you're like I believe yeah. I'm gonna die and then so you shrivel some more and you know alright guys right. see ya I'm going out but this is why they have hospitals this is why well also they have hospitals because they want to track everybody's blood but you know they have this the society has been has been designed in such a way that it's subliminally programming you to what it wants you to believe so that you start doing it all on your own. So if I put a hospital there, if I put old age homes there, if I put, you know, if I just put society in such a way that I'll have you age yourself and get sick and everything, Mm -hmm. because that's what it's telling you, then you're just going to do it. You know, and then I'm just going to make your quote, you know, hologram body uncomfortable so I'm going to make you struggle so that you're going to want to go somewhere else. Or you're going to want to, you know, get old or something. Right, right. All programming. You just make so, you just make the present moment uncomfortable and then provide a solution. Right. And here's the solution. Look at that. you got a hospital to go to. And when you enter those doors, guess what? Then you're going to get other stuff happening. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want the latest illness? Go to the hospital. Let <laughs> you go. They have all the newest models there. Yeah. Just think, okay? So if we if we reformat it the way that we have created society to match our frequency of living sentient being, our frequency of, you know, preventative uh, means of actually actualizing that we don't age and that we don't, that, you know, we don't get diseases really. Um, If we actually formed society to suit and match what the truth is of how we experience creation, my goodness gracious, would you ever be seeing a different entire realm of, like, splendor? Oh, I'm sure. That's another trick, is that 
heaven is like somewhere else. It's like, yes. no, literally yes. every dimension is here. <laughs> like they're, yes. they're all here. Every one of them. And the, 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 the talking about heaven being over there is what keeps us from being there. Right. Cause it's here. Everything's here. <laughs> yeah. And but, so this convergence of the event prize, and it is everything converging in people's minds and consciousness converging into this point, this cell point of existence where everything is, every dimension, every density, every every realm, everything. Yeah. You know? So after you had that experience, um, did you ever smoke weed after that? You know, while I was in it, I told myself many times over, I was like, Gary, if you ever get out of here, you're never, ever, ever, ever going near weed. Ever. <laughs> you know? Because it felt like I was in there for all of eternity, basically. Like, it was a endless, like, the, it, took, it, it was like mental torture really it wasn't anything like horrifying like watching people get mutilated or killed it had nothing to do with any anything like that it was a literal mental torture progression that seemed to last forever and uh when i got out of it my memory was blocked and the only thing that the only thing that i wanted to do at that point well i didn't it, it wasn't like this burning desire or anything but i was like well maybe it wasn't as bad as i thought so i should try it again you know and that I'm sure that's just the, if it yeah. is, if it is some sort of energy thing or parasitic thing, that's how it gets you to come back. Yeah. So I went back and then it wasn't ever as traumatic. It wasn't as bad. It didn't go as deep, but it, it always carried like the initial sort of feelings of that sort of grabbing that it does. And it, it, it turns you into like, a, it's bad. It's not good. It's, it's the worst thing that I think any mind can experience. Yeah. And I know, I know I'm saying it's weed, but it's not weed. It's a literal, like, a construct that a mind can go into that just, like, almost destroys it. It, d it doesn't work good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when you touched your girlfriend, <clears throat> and then you felt like you and, and your girlfriend were one, like you went in her, and you, mm -hmm. you couldn't tell the difference between you and her. Right. It's like you were, like, one. one yeah, it, I touched her, and then, like, it went, whoop, like, it, I mean, it, it like, just... Like a, if you have one blob and the other blob and they come, and they're yeah. like, <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, what? Like, <laughs> you're like, you don't know. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing to do. But I, I think you actually did that. I think you, you know, because this is, this is the other thing. I think that that is what happens when you think about it. The idea of separation is also, is also an illusion. So everybody is experiencing a part of the dream and it's sort of the part of the same dream mind kind of. In yeah. A way. Right. So we're all one, really. When you tear down all of the false constructs of quote the matrix mind, then you would experience that very thing where you just oh, it's like all everything becomes a blob and everybody just is the one blob. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it was something like that, and like that that initial kind of blobbing of me and her that was like the first thing of a whole bunch of blobbing. <laughs> and and none of it was very fun but like in my you know this this mind here can't retain very much of it because it was such like a it was such so, a thing you know like it was i don't know maybe i became the whole thing i have no idea I, all i know is i'm not that anymore but i still retain like a decent bit of the memory of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah it, it was you something imagine, else i mean it's a good thing it was weak because if it would have been something stronger i don't know would you have come back you know <laughs> I don't know. I don't... I think my mind is just really sensitive. I think that's all it is. I, I, I don't... I don't know what it is, but... Like, at first I thought, oh, maybe the thing was uh, laced with, with L LSD, LSD or something. But it wasn't like that either. Like, I couldn't find any good... I, I, I went and researched all of the, you know, experiences, and I didn't find any that really exactly matched that one. So I was like, well, I guess my mind is just strange and it's very sensitive and I shouldn't ever do anything yeah. <laughs> like that whatsoever unless I want to go like go on a <laughs> sojourn for another eternity and then come back who knows when, you know. Exactly. So. Well, I, I mean, you know, that would be a precursor to you playing with energy and the nature of reality anyway, just like the... Um, the yogis or whatever I mean they have time to do that see this is the thing if we all had that kind of time to play with the nature of reality mm -hmm. and energy we'd be levitating normally we'd be doing yeah. all these sorts of things right right yeah and and um, it's like 
you know, it's like Og says, he's like, you know, you guys, the basically the cage door is open, but everybody's traumatized and scared to go out into the grass. Like, that's really all that's happening yeah. here. It's nothing. Yeah, so everybody's like, I like my cage. I yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, there's not any boogie monster or like authoritative being stopping you from going and creating and exploring. It's your yeah. own, like, like, <laughs> I'm scared. You know, that's, that's all it is. Yeah, and even though the grass is beautiful and green and the sunshine is out there beautiful, the, you know, the. Like the sun is real, it's the golden one. It's not like this white. <laughs> it's not the simulator, yeah. Yeah, right, right. I know. But it's, I mean, I don't know. We, because we don't know, we don't know the states of all the people that are out there and we don't know, you know, how many there are, you know, true, like, co-creators. We don't, we, we don't know that. At least I don't know that. I, I can sense if somebody is that, but yeah. as far as numbers-wise, it seems like very few. You know, like, I, I can't put an actual number, but it seems very few. But, and I also think that what's happening is that everything that's happening with these waves in the multiverse and universe of the mind of the infinite verse it's expanding the not only the um the original natural blueprint of our consciousness minds being embodied but it's expanding the consciousness in itself so not just the dna to match the consciousness that will be able to perceive these other elements of quote the dream reality right becoming more real because the dna is going to match the consciousness okay so the dream body has created a body that we're experiencing everything through but it matches the consciousness dna itself right so when that's fixed and it is fixed to a to a degree in a co-consciousness that we accept what reality is so we need something to come in and expand that in order for us to be able to go through the changing it's like the quickening mm -hmm. one and that's what we're going through now we're going through the quickening when that happens it's not just the dna body that we have or the DNA dream body, but it's the DNA mind body that is expanding. And then through that expansion, people are going to be able to perceive other realms of reality that up until now were not even accessible. And this is why um, we have the situation in the dilemma um, through the population or the known population, we don't even really know what the real population is of, um, of you know, people here that they are selecting to believe the state of consciousness that so far is rigged inside of them. Yeah. Hence, you know, they can't expand unless they're really genuinely being expanded. Right, right. Accelerated, quickened. And that's what all these waves are doing. These waves are quickening us. And through the quickening, it's almost like yes it's tearing down previous veils that kept everybody in the cage even though the cage door is open once enough of those veils are completely um dismantled the consciousness itself is going to be able to expand to meet other levels of reality and our dna to match that yeah yeah it make that makes sense to me because um with with me personally i feel i feel all these other levels like i feel all the other possibilities but my um screen so to speak is staying the same basically like it's not you know yes. i i complain sometimes you know mainly to myself but to other people that understand i'm like how come my my screen's not ever changing like how come cool things aren't happening here why do these people all do the same fucking thing and go in the same patterns and no. no, nothing interesting ever happens and i'm like like no, yeah. I don't want cataclysm, but I would like, you know, the creativity <laughs> thing to to <laughs> come in a little bit more, you know? Yeah, and that's and that is happening. And that without without being pushed, okay, and this is and this is the thing, see, the projects, they know that they have to stress you out in order to pull out the metagenes from inside you. 
so that they display themselves. Otherwise, they'll stay dormant. They're quite happy to be dormant. <laughs> so this is, and this is the case with how we experience reality is that we are happy to be dormant. Mm -hmm. We're happy to stay in the same cage. So long yeah. as it's not hurting us, right? Like, right, right. So long There's as we're not... relatively comfortable and cozy, you know, we're like, yeah, I'm snuggly here. I'll... I like, yeah, <laughs> I bought a new pillow, you know, the bed looks really great, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But, but you stress, you stress the DNA, you stress what's in there lying dormant, which is, you know, your metagenes, your, your true gifts, your abilities. You stress it enough, it'll come out. But it has to come out through some kind of pressure, stress, or whatever. The waves that are happening are stressful. They're whamming us on a like subatomic, atomic level going through everything. Just imagine an MRI. It's like we're being pummeled through the MRI of our being. Mm -hmm. And it is stressful. But that's how expansion is happening. That's how, you know, your backdrop may change. Your screen will start changing but it isn't through being comfortable and being dormant i mean we're being pummeled <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i think so long as this the, the changing is done in a fashion that is uh like tolerable to the being yeah. then fine then so be it it's 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 when uh you know, and, and the thing I went through obviously did something for me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be where I am now. But I wouldn't recommend anybody to do that because that's very super traumatic. And, you know, who knows if I would have even came back from that. Like, I, I feel like that was a, yeah. Well, I think some people wouldn't have. Yeah. I think there was a possibility, you know, that that, and I'll tell you, you know, there was an experience that I had when I was 14 that kind of, you know, I can totally relate to it. So I was 14 and where I lived in Ontario, Southwestern Ontario, every year in September, there would be this fair um, that would happen. And I went to the fair and of course, like all the kids were, you know, they were always um, pretty hard on me and they were always trying to get me to smoke pot. Mm -hmm. um, and I never wanted to touch drugs because drugs scared me because I knew I was always having a hard time staying in my body as it was. And having all this stuff happening. You're like, like, I don't need more help here. <laughs> I don't need more. So, but they were really, really cruel, really um, forceful. Anyway, so I went to the fair and it was um, with a group of these kids that were older um, that were connected to my sister and we went inside the planetarium okay so and that in itself just me being in the planetarium in itself was like oh this is like i'm high already <laughs> it was like a you know i can go into things easily so yeah. so of course they were handling handing a joint around right and i'm like no i don't want it i don't want it i don't want it and they were like take it <laughs> you have to smoke it <laughs> and i'm like no but i don't want to wow and they're like, do it. So I had maybe like, you know, two tokes, you know, because I really didn't want any at all. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know this. It was laced with LSD. <laughs> wow. Very, very, very bad, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> because what happened next? <laughs> well, yeah, that was really bad. Was and it similar to what, what, I, what I experienced or was it on a different level? No, no, it was very similar to what you experienced. Yeah. In fact, in fact, the the thing was that I went right out. I went right out to ev like to points of every spark of creation, and I couldn't find my way back. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the spark of creation I was hitting, pinging all of them, and it's like fire. It's like fire that ignites, and I was like inside it. And it was all like connecting to every other one. And I was like, gone. Yeah, <laughs> like, right, right. Just gone in it all. Like I'm it, it, all of it, I couldn't come back. Uh huh. And then I guess what happened was I'm running through the, the fairground screaming because I'm like, I'm not even there. But my the body was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then I went into a coma for four, four days. Wow. Wow, so, so you, you 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 went further, like you went uh, you almost did get lost, huh? I almost <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I mean I saw the possibility for that because it's 
it's such a disintegration of the uh, the identity, even the identity that's beyond the ego complex. I mean, right. the ident the the spiritual, the DNA, ident all like every all of it, all lifetimes, like everything, like all of it. yeah, you can oh, go. Not even there. Yeah, you can go just like zooming out into space, and like you can leave by behind every 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 everything. Yeah. And, and that's what I did. I was zipping yeah. out there to like every spark of like everything that ignited. I was like out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that's not probably not the most uh, fun. Probably kind of scary, right? <laughs> oh, it was terrifying. I think <laughs> I think the coma was what happened to protect me to try and get me back. Mm. I think if it wasn't for the coma, I probably wouldn't have come back. And so, uh, how did you come out of the coma? Like, how were you coming out of that? Your mind. I came back like, like, <gasps> like that. Yeah. yeah. After after four like days. I, like I just come out of the experience. Oh wow. I didn't know I was four days in a coma. I didn't know. Oh wow. Okay. So it was li like literally taking a deep breath. <gasps> like that. <laughs> and like was there out. was there a long integration period for that experience, like years afterward? Well, I mean, it just it was just added on to the rest of them, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, it was it was different for me because I didn't really have those. Like I didn't, I wasn't like uh, I didn't have supernatural things happening all the time. I was I was pretty normal kid, you know. Like we're all smart and we're above average intelligence, but we didn't have like we had the an occasional poltergeist, the ghost banging on things, and that was yeah. turned out to that be the, <laughs> that was like the cat. Like it wasn't even a ghost. So like yeah. <laughs> it was a poltergeist cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even, I, I was not even privy to any of this stuff until that experience. It was exactly like all of life was totally normal. And then I smoked weed and then I realized that all of it was fake. And then I came back and I was pissed off. You know, I was like, <laughs> I was like, why are you guys still doing this? Why is everyone still like, why aren't we playing or something? Like, why, why is it still going on? Yeah, why are we playing? <laughs> why are we pretending all of this? All oh, right. Like if you're going to pretend... Don't pretend that you're in pain, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, you know, I think that, though, you realize a lot of stuff, you just didn't talk about it because you had a totally normal upbringing and you were all above average in intelligence, but you really didn't have anything physically around you to be able to give you indicators of this other reality besides the poltergeist cat. Yeah. But, and we didn't like that. Like, that was scary. <laughs> we were like, no. <laughs> Did you see things move? <laughs> no, I mean, like, no, we were so normal. We were ridiculously normal. It right, was... but I mean, even though you were ridiculously normal, I am I am certain that you were like, ooh, I can see stuff. <laughs> Well, like, like I, I didn't, I, I never took the stuff seriously for some reason. Like I never took the, the, the programming very seriously. I always, I always wanted to just mess around the whole time, even as a child. But then like I had the weed experience and then I, I realized, oh, I should have been messing around a lot more than I actually was, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then that's, yeah, that's where I, that's where I am today. It's like, I'm trying to bring the play into the realm right. and just t show the people like what's, a small fraction of what's possible. I'm not trying to like freak people out. Just give like a gentle introduction into like this place is different than you think. It's just different. That's all there is to yeah, it. Play with it. Yeah. Play with it. Right. You know, I'm always playing with it. I'm always like, and you know, people around me, they're like, oh, oh my god, oh my god. And you're like, are you afraid to get kicked out? Like, if I did that, <laughs> I would get kicked out, or they would call the police, or like something. And I'm like, no, wow, come on. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, look at the look at the Harry Potter story. Like that whole story, they're challenging authority the whole entire time. That's what made it interesting. Like if you imagine you told a story about like something that went on here in this realm, like it'd be the most boring story you could possibly imagine. It'd be like all the kids walked in and sat down and they didn't say anything and the teacher taught and then they walked out and had lunch. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Exactly. It's like, no, no, you guys, like make your school into a Harry Potter school or make something, do something. Yes. Exactly. Instead of like what it is, which what it is, is to take away your visual ability, your imagination. And that's what I was warned about when I was young, too. It was really interesting because, um, you know, because I could do, I mean, you know, for fun, when I was a kid, I would, I would like move stuff with my mind. 
Mm -hmm. I'd like to sit there in my bedroom and I would just move my pens and <laughs> I would take all the cutlery from the kitchen and I would use it. But then by the time I was done, it was all bent and stuff. <laughs> My, my mom would get really upset. She's like, can you just leave the cutlery alone? Um, you know, but... That's really funny. So, you can just push the limits to everything, but unless we demand it, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So, even, you know, when you, when you look at the school and what what is school? What is school? What are the quote education systems <laughs> what is that in this place it's telling you that you're not allowed to have imagination you're not allowed to have visualization and damn it if you have it we're going to be the ones to tell you how to use it mm -hmm. and we're going to you know use it on your behalf so i was warned when i was little um that i had to guard my mind and prevent them from taking my gifts of visualization and creativity and imagination because that's where our power lies. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Because what is education? Whoa, if you had any creation, really, if you had any kind of real creation, they're going to zap it out of you. You know? They're going to, like, by the time they're done with you, you're just a factory product. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is, the ironic part about it is that even when they're trying to zap and extract energy, they're losing out on your actual creative abilities because you're not even capable of utilizing those when you're under programming and fear trauma. Like, you can't even do it. There, no, there's no. there's just a very small kind of, like, knowing that you could do something somehow, but you don't, you're not there, so... Yeah, exactly. Know. So they're just going to get an aspect of it that isn't even, you know... The fullness. It's just a waste of you, what you are as a being. Like, I know that I was always throttled whenever I was in, like, a normal work situation or whatever, and I just tried to give a pure mind to the situation. Like, the bosses hated it, the managers hated it, the everybody hated it, everyone hated it, nobody understood what the hell I was talking about, and I was like, okay, like, I was just trying to say something. Okay, I guess you, don't, I guess you guys don't want that, but... You know, I always I always felt like I had some some value to give, but I didn't ever have an an audience or any appreciation until literally like one year ago, and that was the whole entire life. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So like when you would do this at work, and you would be very objective about it, right? Yeah, I was always fair. Like I was always very impartial. I was like this and this and this and blah blah blah. You know, like. And it was always, it always went down to the caste and hierarchy system and that I should not be opening my mouth, basically. <laughs> Did it ever occur to you that you threaten people, like, so that, that you have something they sense, which is very threatening to them. So, and it's threatening to the bosses. Did it ever occur to you that that you are yeah it did it did it occurred to me that I had some sort of some sort of something but I yeah. I didn't uh, because like I told you before like I, I've always been isolated so I I didn't I didn't even want to move basically in, unless I knew I had some sort of support somewhere I didn't yeah I, I was like I don't want to just start moving here and then I don't know like I envisioned sort of bad things happening if I went too far with <laughs> you know did you? Did I do? Did I do things? No. Did you actually envision that bad things would happen to you if you were like, if you were to go too far? Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did. Yeah. Like I saw that oh. I would get, I would get thrown in jail, or, and of course, you know, like now I know. Yes, you know, you're gonna either manifest you're going to jail or you're not. But like, even the way I am now, I am still a very. Uh, I'm not. I'm still not moving. Like I'm still yeah. not moving at all. I'm right now. I'm just literally still getting bearings and fi finding people and communicating and things like that. So I'm, I'm like only mental right now, so to speak. Yeah. But at the same time, like I don't, the realm is not even ready for anything yet. So like we got, <laughs> we got to prepare that first and then, you know, then you can very slowly start doing something. Exactly. Which is what we're doing. Yeah. With the, with the help of also these new particles that are coming in and, you know, helping the transition and the acceleration and the quickening. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I there's there's definitely new energy, and you, you can tell on people's people talking on the the forums and just the comments in general. Like there is, it is outside of the sort of like there's two things that are going on generally speaking. That's like the completely robots, and then there is a gradation scale of like kind of sense something is weird to like nearly fully awake. You have that, yeah. and then you have like complete robots, and you yeah. know. The complete robots comprise the majority of the situation, but if you keep your energy on the other side, then you know you'll you you, yes. won't, you won't go insane and feel lonely and all that. And that's a phenomenon all on its own is the um, you know the robot aspect, backdrop aspect of this whole reality system is fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's very. I mean, until until I figured out that that they were basically robots, then I. I think until you realize that people are different here, that like not everybody's the same, then you're just gonna be fucked up. Like you're gonna, your mind is not gonna work right because it's like, I'm trying to say something to them and like it's not catching somehow at all, and I can't tell how or why, but for some reason like they're not understanding anything of what I'm saying whatsoever. <laughs> like they look like a human and it seems like they should be, but there's just nothing getting through. <laughs> no, know? no, there's no human responses to anything outside of their you know, their program. The mouth will move and words words will issue forth. <laughs> yeah, their software. Yeah. The stuff thing is happening, but But they are remote controlled. So this is why it's very fascinating when you see this, how you know, the simulation remote controls the backdrops to do certain things when a reel steps into the situation. And oftentimes you will see that they're programmed to stress out the real or to create something or some drama to pull you in. Uh huh. I've noticed that that's dependent on whether you're giving anything to bite or not. Right. Exactly. I've so, figured I figured out how to give nothing for it to bite, like not nothing, but like as low level as possible. And then I'm like, oh my god, like they're leaving me alone. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> no, no, nobody knows I'm here. You know, I'm chilling here. And, you know. Nobody can see me. It's all good. Like, nobody's bothering me. Yeah. And and so what is it about... See, this is the other aspect of it. What is it about our responses that when we feed or feed a reaction to them, when they create these setups, and they're just a part of the simulation, they're the backdrops, so somehow the reaction that is being emitted from us is being injected into the software of the simulation so that it can do other things. Right. But when we don't react, it's almost like the program, like a computer. It thinks you're. It thinks you're another computer. Right. That's that's basically the trick. Yes. Like you, yes. you, you figure out how to trick it that you're another computer, and then you essentially then are just, another computer. Like you're just a robot, and it doesn't, you know, like. Exactly. So then it just goes, oh, okay, well. <laughs> yeah. Like nothing is going on over here. You know, is this. But the funny thing about it is, like, once you've attained that sort of skill, you can still dance and move and do, like, what, what you know, other robots shouldn't be doing, but it still can't see you. So, like, that's kind of like the back-engineered trick of it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a funny world. Matrix hack for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> How not to let it eat you on every single occasion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It is fascinating. I mean, when you think about the, um, I, I used to just watch, I used to just watch the backdrop and I mean the backdrop of it all, like they, they really go out of their way to create backdrops, even in society, like to make everything look a certain way. Mm -hmm. And it is in that way kind of really is like the Truman show, right? The movie, I don't know if yeah. you saw that. Right? I've seen all of those ones. Yeah. It's, it's an entire <laughs> island that's just been created and he's like whoa you know <laughs> like not realizing the whole thing is a backdrop right but society at large this is what i'm saying society at large and how it it is strategically designed designed to interact with the reels but also to get the reels to believe the program and believe that they are part of the program. Right. But it doesn't want them totally. to know that they're part of the no. program. <laughs> no. 
So it's, exactly. just, it's just a little trick that you got to figure out for yourself and then, and then orient yourself to that new, fresh perspective. Exactly. Okay, and what about, what about the reanimated population? What do you mean, like Nazis coming out of the ocean? Or? No, this is freaky. <laughs> If you, if you, um, so I have this theory about the reanimated population. Oh, you, you, you mean like, uh, archetype characters being repopulated through? They just keep being reanimated. Like, I've over heard, over I've heard of that. Yeah, like your celebrities or your music, your pop stars, all that stuff. Over and over. It's almost like every single solitary player in this simulation game are reanimated. And so if you look at the historical pictures, I mean, if you do like black and white or you just go into history pictures or history paintings, like this is something I enjoy doing because I know I'm like, oh, well, there's this person and then there's that person and they're the same person Mm. or the same person is here now more than once because they can do that. So they can have the same reanimated being injected in into this, you know, reality more than once at the same time. Like, do you have a specific example of what you'd be talking about? Um, well, I mean, you can get, I don't have it. Well, I have to, well, there's just so much in my brain. I just, I'd have to pull <laughs> one out. Um, I mean, are you talking about like from an era, from a generation to a generation, like a, a president Obama, it's 50 years later is a president, blah, blah, whoever else. Or, or yeah, or he's, um, president Obama, in the United States, and then he's also somebody else that lives in Africa. Or he's also Vladimir Putin at the same and, time. Uh, also, yeah, like, yeah, it's like reanimated because they can just do it more than once if they want to at the same time. So they can just put him in different parts of the globe. Um, and, yeah. and they can reanimate the backdrops. So the backdrops can be the same stream, the same exact population of the archetype of this reality system that they just keep using over and over again so even if it's um a billion people they're just reanimating a billion people over and over again and they can do it as much as they want yeah i feel like if it's if it's a program at its core then of course yeah like why would you need like hey you know you could you could run into mm, you know putin five times in this lifetime because he's five different people but it's the same reanimate it's quite possible. It, it's it's a very <laughs> it's a very strange. Uh, the construct is strange. Like I find the I find the the talking heads like the the overt kind of fakeness of like the news stations and all that. I find that kind of fascinating, honestly, in the fact that <laughs> the players, so to speak, either are they're all hiding and just laughing, like they don't give a shit at all, or else like they're just fast asleep or something because either that or it's just me and it's just a sea of npcs or robots because like to me it's just, it, it it makes no sense like there's no relevance no connection to anything like the, nope. the guy is orange and he's talking about a border a wall <laughs> like it doesn't have, there's yeah. no there's nothing there's nothing there no very strange no. no but i do i feel like the construct of this matrix is is not just the construct of the matrix but it's the construct of the players of the all the archetypes of all the reanimated population i also feel like they can reanimate us Mm -hmm. so like they take from the reels and then they they have all these projects that they do so that you like five of you are out there somewhere 10 of you are out there i've seen you know i i've had some pretty fascinating experiences where because you know i've got clients from all over the world i've had fascinating experiences where i have the same client in a different part of the world and they're at the identical client really? <laughs> it's like i have three of you as do, my do they ex- do they act exactly the same way they look the same. They act the same. They are identical. They have different <laughs> names. They have different. They're in different places of the world. But they're all paying you, right? So you're so you're benefiting here. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like, okay, this is, this is, this is, you know, this is what's happening. Here. You don't tell any of them like there are three or four of you out there. You know, I have, actually, yes, I have told them because I'm like, whoa, you need to know this. Like, <laughs> what do they say? I think they're well. I think people are shocked because I think it's really disturbing to them. <laughs> <laughs> that 
this is going on. But you have um, five doppelgangers. Did you know you, that? Yeah, I mean, I've seen my doppelgangers. Yeah. Like, various times throughout my life. I've had friends who've seen my doppelgangers called me on the phone while they were with my doppelganger <laughs> going, I am standing in front of you right now as I call you. And this is before cell phones. Yeah. So, and I am looking at you right now while I have you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that would be some weird, like, you see yourself and then, you know, like, it cancels the Matrix and, like, you wake up. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so, you know, there's um, there's a whole bunch of pictures on the on the internet about, you know, this reanimated population that uh, can, you name it. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think there isn't one that, that has, I mean, Cage, Nicholas Cage, um, you know, uh, God, I, the list goes on. I mean, there are... You could see, and sometimes you can even see that it's more than once, like throughout, but they're looking at historical pictures, but what I'm saying is that you can exist simultaneously at the same time here in different parts of the world and not even know. You think that's the same sort of spirit connecting those versions, or that's like just some weird replicator? I think it's some weird replicator. <laughs> <laughs> so like a ro robot yeah. versions of the original? Yeah, and I think, I mean... I, I think in terms of us, the reels, I think that we have a real, a more real version of a body outside the dream. Yeah, right, right, right. And that we are always connecting to that. That's what gives us this um, palette of what is real for us to be able to draw upon. Yeah, um, uh, Sunny Peaches or Tiffany, when she was still around in the public, she, she said that and this is her theory, I don't know, I haven't looked into it myself, but she said in the level up, we're like some worm being, like, that split itself into a female and a male down here, like, you have your, like, I have my female counterpart, and you have your male counterpart, and then, but you're fundamentally split from one level up. I don't know if, if you've heard anything about that or not, but... I haven't heard about that, but I do, I do, um, I think that when the, when, like, the Infiniverse split in half, this is what essentially happened to us, that we split from our ourselves and we had to experience the dream from polarities so you know the male and the female are one polarity yeah right it's like the the you know um going through different facets of the dark um you know like when you create a black hole like the black hole part aspect of ourselves uh, the anti-creation aspect of, of ourselves i think it's all a part of that splitting that happened yeah you know does it make sense that we're in a dual reality system mm, entirely when it when you think of what we are as a being no it doesn't make sense to have duality yes it makes sense to that we've been experiencing the dream in duality and polarity because until we don't need it anymore, you know, then we're just going to keep experiencing it. Yeah. I, I feel like the duality as necessity is a phase that you outgrow. Like, I feel like I outgrew that. Sure. I because, don't, because, because it, it, the, for, to even recognize duality, you have to make the jump into projection land and at, I tell you from my experience, I don't have to project at all. Like, I can sit here and not project at all and not put any meaning on anything, and yet it's totally fine and still here. It makes total sense, and I can leave it be. You know, I don't need to. Yeah. I don't. I don't have to do that. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, there's nobody sitting there forcing Gary. You must project. <laughs> yeah. No. You know. Right. Exactly. And and maybe when you get to that that you don't need to project anymore, you know, you're just sort of helping people see that because mm -hmm. we're gonna run out of needing this storyline because because the thing is is like there's a fear a lot of people have a fear that like oh once i you know well if i have ego death or if i transcend this or transcend that or i become enlightened or whatever god forbid you become enlightened okay well i'm gonna just be nothing and nothing's gonna exist and i'm gonna be all by myself for all of eternity and i'm like no <laughs> you're not all by yourself you know you're exact everything you've ever had you still have it it's just like you are free internally from having to just be pulled and yanked and pushed and pulled and forced this yeah. way and that way by your own mind. Like, your own mind is now not a taskmaster anymore. Right. That's literally all it is. Yeah. And your own mind isn't booby-trapping you. Left, right, and center. Right. You know? 
You have I mean, quiet in your mind. It's quiet, but you know, look at I, I used to be fascinated by by these people that would, um, you know, like Houdini, um, but they would push their physicality to an extreme so that their physicality wouldn't experience what everybody else would experience in it, right? So you yeah. just put yourself in an ice cube and just sit there for, you know, eight hours and just see what happens or just slow your heart down until it's like one beat a minute. Yeah. You know, and then just be like that. I am fascinated by that or fascinated by people who, you know, they climb the Himalayas and they do all this extreme stuff where there's no oxygen. Wim Hof. Uh, you heard of Wim Hof? Yes. Yes. That guy, yeah. he's he's the modern Houdini. Like he can regulate his own internal body temperature just by wanting to. Yes. And that and I mean I that's like I say, I'm just like fascinates me. I he love can it. he love can it. drink poison and his body doesn't ingest it, it just passes it through. Right. And I'm just like, boom, that's it. And it's not he, like a magic miracle. He went to Stanford Medical Center or whatever, like, you know, prestigious yes. college and he's, he's like the back. Yeah. He's like, test me, <laughs> watch. Right. <laughs> and it's people like that I love. Okay, this is this is it in a nutshell. This is like playing, playing with mm-hmm. the fabric of reality. Yeah, yeah. People, this is what we're meant to be doing. You know, this is why I have to laugh when I go. You know, when I'm when I'm at school or whatever, and everybody's like coughing or like they've got the flu or whatever, and they're like, <laughs> and then I just walk in my little bubble, and I'm like, you know, I have this thing where I like. I like go like this with my fingers, and I put my suit on, my super suit, right? I'm like, oh, super suit. <laughs> <laughs> As I walk through all these people, I'm like, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just the fact that they accept, and they get sick every year because somebody's told them that that's what's normal. It's flu season. There's flu season. You must. Everybody's gonna get the flu. Right, right. Right. <laughs> and not everybody gets the flu. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't even I don't even guard against it anymore because like I don't know like I, I do that too like what you're saying you know you can you can develop any sort of little uh, crypt, cryptographic mental protection for anything yeah. anything everything's frequency and energy yeah so it's it's good to do that but you can also even like put it on autopilot after you've done it for a long while because <laughs> once you're not sitting there believing I'm gonna get sick because it's flu season then then yeah. you won't get sick yeah exactly so you know. You can have your, you can do whatever. Create like your little remote control and it's just a party and you're like, well, it just happens. You know, <laughs> like, mm. and then you have all of this, these layers or whatever. I mean, it's, yeah, there's so much to do with stuff like that. But going back to those people that are masters of playing with reality, because that's really what it is. They mastered playing with reality. They mastered that, well, you know, the physical body isn't really physical, is it? Right, right. You know, I can create a program and the program, I can create a body in the program and tell the body to feel exactly what I want it to feel and to sense everything. I can give it 316 senses. In a program. I can give it whatever I want. Yeah. And it'll feel it. It'll be it. It'll, Mm -hmm. it'll react and respond to exactly that. But it's software. Right. We're, we're, we're just learning to actually code this software program from within the program. Exactly. That's what we're doing. Yep. And it's not yep. easy and you can't sit there with your belief system ideas because <laughs> it doesn't work. Like you're coding the code within the code of the code. Like it's a different, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Because you've already, once you accept the code of something else, once you accept what that is and the reality connected to that. That comes with like, uh, you know, and you know, it's infinity all on its own, and it has its own version of reality. It's not my version. Yeah. It's just exploration, like it's it's yeah. just the ability to be creative and be and explore and not. I think dropping the fear thing is really important. I don't know that that it's an easy thing to do but I think this energy that's coming into the realm with people like you and I and everyone else that's doing the same thing is because people have been so long kind of even holding in the back of their mind that this external authority construct is is run by beings like spirited beings and it's like no it's not it's not like compare a real person like 
sitting there talking, blah, 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 put me up there and then put like a president up there and just compare the energy. Like there is no similarity. None. None. <laughs> right. And again, right? But it, it's easy to start spotting then, oh, reanimated. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, this is like a complete program all in. It, it's just, you know, I, I always think um, there's a certain passion to fire. There's a certain passion to, you know, fire, fire creation, creation fire, like the first spark that came out of the deep mm-hmm. is a thought. Like, I am. Like, this thought, I said, I am. So you have the deep. The deep is the deep. It's like, you can't say black because black's like color, kind of. So it's like, it's a place of no place. Mm -hmm. But then you have something that comes out of it, and it's like this this fire ignition, suddenly, in nothing but a void, an abyss. Mm -hmm. It's just like fire. It's fire. But I am. It's fire. Right. That's what uh, that's what he described it in uh, what you call it book. What was that book? Um, where they talked about the the beings enslaving humanity. I always forget what it's called. It's an old book. We talk about it all the time. What's it called? Don Juan. And oh, oh, oh. I forget the book's name, but Don Juan was his teacher. Don, Don Quixote. No, Don Juan. Don Juan. Oh, I'll, okay. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. You know what I'm talking about. Everyone. Everyone. Oh, oh, oh. Um, yes. What were they? I never read them, actually. Um, which is crazy. I don't read a lot of books. I don't read a lot of books. I don't read a lot of I don't read a lot. That's what people keep asking me if I... I don't read a lot either, but when I um, find something that explains, like, the ridiculousness that this reality is pretending to be, then I... Yeah. <laughs> I pay attention to it. Did he say that? That's cool. Because that's my memory of it. My memory is like that spark of fire was like, ooh, I am. <laughs> Don Juan. The electromagnetism created from the spark that was, you know, what sort of created the entirety of how we experience it. It's not Don Juan. It's, it's... No, it's, um, I, I think I know who you mean. Um, the, he, he was going to like a, a Mexican, like a shaman guy and the, the guy was teaching him with like trips to the oh. desert and he would take like medicines and go see visions. Yeah, why can't we remember his name? <laughs> I don't know, I'm getting blocked. I'm getting blocked too, how is that possible? I've talked about this story like a thousand times. Not Don Carlos, not... Oh my God, why th- are we blocked? <laughs> Don... This is crazy. Why are we both getting blocked with this? I don't know, but this is not new for me. I'm always blocked from this dumb book. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It it is Don Juan, and it's Carlos Castaneda. Carlos Castaneda! That's it! Yeah. My God, I don't know why. We're both like, "Mm, what is that? My memory is so bad, like, but that's also like a defense strategy, so I'm happy for it at the same time. Yeah, I always say I never have, I never bother remembering what isn't really important, which means I don't remember a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I forget most everything that, yeah, <laughs> I forget most everything, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but in, in he, when he was telling his story, like this, this, this shaman guy, when, when, uh, Don Juan, uh, when Carlos Castaneda went to Mexico to get taught by Don Juan, Don Juan had this friend and Carlos wanted to go talk to this friend, right? Yeah. So Carlos goes and t- talks to his friend, but Don Juan was warning him. He was like, this guy dances. Like, when he sees you, if he doesn't like your energy, he's going to start dancing to protect himself if he doesn't want to interact with you. Wow. So he went and... St- wow. Yeah, he went and Carlos went over there, and the guy, true to what Don Juan said, didn't like him, so he started dancing. <laughs> and then, like, that was, like, that was it. He did a dance, and then he, they, the energies could not interact with each other, and then, you know, Carlos went on his way. Um, Whoa, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah, but but the to relate it to what you're saying, uh, Don Juan says. He says either it was either Don Juan or this dancing guy that said I don't remember which one, but he said human beings are like p- standing pillars of fire. Like, what do you do with that? You can't kill it. You can't mutilate it. Yes, the body can happen this and that way, but it's like an eternal fire. Like that's literally yeah, it what it is. Go it's like once it <laughs> came out of the deep. That fire came out of the deep. That was that. I am. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? I am 
gonna experience what I am. <laughs> right, like, it doesn't matter what I do about it, it doesn't matter what you do about it. No. I was like, that's, it, it's what it is, and that's all there is to it. Wow, that's, I didn't know that. That's so cool. That's it's awesome. a good book. If you haven't read it or haven't read it in a while, I would recommend it. I have never read it, no. I've you should, yeah, it. you should. I, I recommend that book for sure. Whoa. Yeah, I think, um, I, I mean, and I love hearing stories like that that corroborate, like, my memory of my experience of it. Because, mm-hmm. because we can go anywhere in the experience of our creation because there is no time. And it's always, the, the thing about it is it's always new. Like, you you hear stories about, like, oh, we always repeat the past. Like, this bullshit that people tell you to make war proliferate. All this of this. Like, no, nothing has ever repeated ever, ever, ever. And it's not ever, ever going to repeat. It's impossible. Yeah, because that's always a new experience of that. Right. Experience. Like, the, the central witnesser is always witnessing something new. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's always yeah, yeah. new. And that's what I like about history history is fascinating to me and because it tells you where the where the mind or the amoeba the amoeba like we're always in a state of one amoeba before we expand into the the next growth of the amoeba and it tells you the limitations of where we are at to experience reality at that place and that's why everything is created in such a way to reflect where that is to reflect the cell at that moment in time and how that changes because nothing stays the same yeah as we experience creation yeah it's very interesting to it's interesting for me to look at minds that came prior to me because I'm always trying to find someone who would think like me or who, who I could relate to somewhat and I, I don't find that a lot in history, although I do somewhat in in the people that are kind of like I can only just say it's curious, like they're curious about their environment. Like there's it's it's really simple. It's not like it's just a simple curiosity and a, a sort of freedom from the programming at the same time because if you're just doing the programming then you basically aren't even there to be curious to begin with. Right. You have to, like, awaken yourself to know that you're existing and that you're moving around within a realm, and then at that point, like, be creative. Yeah. Which is... I remember I... mm, This is actually funny. Um, I took philosophy in university, right? Because I'm like, ooh, that's natural. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I failed. Yeah? (laughs) But, like, I laugh at that because I'm like, okay, because that's a sign that you actually really are passing. Right, right, right. (laughs) Right, yeah. But nobody could see that, right? Like, the teachers weren't like, no, I, I fully understand, like, what you're doing, you know? You're applying philosophy to this class. <laughs> like, I'm actually applying philosophy to philosophy class, and right. they failed me for it. No, 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 we don't want... <laughs> we don't We don't want any of that. I, ne- I never had teachers that, like, accepted a creative piece of work. They always said, like, no, 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 this is not... I didn't even no. get any teachers that were like saw my aim at least like okay I see where you're trying to like I see what you're trying to do here but I can't accept it because it's not fitting our structure but I see what you're trying to do like didn't even have that, I never that. no <laughs> really not even once nope but then to, to be fair I've never like I didn't really try too much in school I just I, I didn't like being there in the first place so I kind of just tried to skate by <laughs> yeah that's interesting that you didn't have anybody that actually could see what you were doing. <laughs> no. Nobody's ever seen what I'm doing. It, like I said, until the last year, and then for some reason, something strange happened, and all of a sudden, people were seeing. <laughs> <laughs> it's converging. Yeah, I mean, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. You know what, like, I don't know, like, there, people want change, they want change internally and externally, but they're, the realm is so pervasive in its kind of, like, stickiness that, for one, it doesn't like people talking to each other, so it tries to discourage that in however way, and then also, like, even if you form groups, like, I've formed groups with people, and they just kind of fall apart after a while, especially if you're on opposite sides of the, the realm, and you don't have any, like, practical reason to be talking all the time, and you're not, like, social butterflies to begin with, so, yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. you know, like, the... We have to put continual effort into it, otherwise it doesn't really work that well. But, see, this is what's interesting, is that the the issue, the issue 
is that we cannot seem to connect in a group and we cannot seem to be able to keep that going in a in a way that is fluid so that we can utilize all of our gifts together and i mean apart i'm not talking about cults cults seem to be able to do this really well <laughs> right. <laughs> right like how do they do it without getting in trouble like how how does that work <laughs> Whenever, you know, a real group wants to get together to do some good, you know, it doesn't seem to work. But if you want to create a cult, it just seems to go like magic. Well, let's just create a real group that's doing good that's pretending to be a cult. <laughs> we might have to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a cult seemed to be acceptable fair nowadays, so, you know, well, we could try something like well, that. <laughs> I mean, and yeah, it does seem to be... I don't know. Is it is it like a false or a suit of security for people? Is it, um, you know, I would love to see a group that comes together with the loose, the looseness of being together. Do you know what I mean? There's like yeah, no yeah. real, there's no real format. There's no real anything. You just you sort of come together because everybody's energetically tuned in, and then everybody's using our ability in imagination yeah and visualization to play with reality yeah there i i've always uh, had the idea that that would be good it's just you just have to remember that there are energies here that don't like that happening so you just remember that the realm is going to try and fuck with you like within your own mind especially if you hold on to these ideas that you know the realm's going to try to fuck with you you know yeah then so, it'll yeah it'll happen yeah yeah but but i i also i've also noticed that even even us even me like who's very open i still fall prey to the idea that like this thing out there is trying to stop me from being creative and yeah. where that may have been in the past i feel like the energy is different now and the cage door literally is open and if we want to do that then just we just do it like who cares we just do it yeah, yeah. it's as simple I mean, as that when i hear people and this is like i mean i i under, i really really understand people's experience of pain and agony because i've gone through that as well like i had to basically transmute you know hell but just like other people so i and i totally understand where people are coming from when they feel experience of pain, agony, or a lot of the time, this is like the best school that we have within ourselves of how our own minds work. Yeah. How yeah. it's used against us it to is. create all these things. So when I hear people clinging, well, you know, I'm, you know, I, I'm being like hit all the time. I'm like, look, I, I'm hit in my sleep sometimes. I wake up with marks to this day. So I still experience weird phenomenon like that. Like a lot of marks, okay? Like crazy marks on my body. Um, that I can honestly say, well, you know, I didn't have that before I went to bed. And I take pictures of it, you know, because yeah. some of them are just like, oh, well, I've got like a... Is it a is it like painful or is it just a mark? Well, sometimes uh, I don't feel anything at all, but the mark is huge. Like they're massive. Uh, sometimes it burns. And all manner of stuff. Like sometimes I will feel it. Sometimes I will wake up with you know punctures. Wow. So like like needles have been put in, or so I you know I I experience all this stuff. Although I don't I don't feed it, so I don't feed it. So it doesn't. And but I can see where people are saying, yeah, I like you know I'm being my lab and I'm being like hit hard and I don't feel right. I'm being drugged and I'm not you know I don't have energy. Like we're all experiencing through these new particles coming in and these these waves that we don't have energy like we're being we're really being thrashed mm -hmm. you know j just on every level possible we're being thrashed and there is that like unnatural exhaustion that you can't you can see for 14 hours and you still feel like garbage yeah. so i mean that those things are real in as far as they're real and yeah it's our relationship to what that is like but it's just when we decide to be victims of whatever we feel we're experiencing, we are deciding the script that we're following. Yeah. And when that happens, that's the script that's going to play out. Yep. 
And also to add to that, that's the script that's going to play out and you're also going to be, uh, I guess, deceived into thinking that that's like appropriate or like you deserve that or something. And then you will just simply right. stay, you will simply stay there. Yes. Yes. And you won't ever be able to get over it, you know? Because you've like now identified with the, the, the pain body or you've identified with the oh. victim or whatever. And then, because there is power in that, like in being in anything here in the realm, there's some sort of power and there's some sort of company that likes your, your, your little yeah. issue there and they want to help you with it and, you know, all this <laughs> stuff. So, totally. So, like, <laughs> yeah. So it's up to us. Like, whatever limitations we experience, we experience them because we accept those limitations. Yes. We don't need to accept any limitations. It truly is, is like that, that hey the door is wide open there is like beautiful sunshine beaming with like this beautiful grass and uh you know birds singing and butterflies <laughs> and all of it right and you don't need to stay in your hall <laughs> and it, yeah and and you don't you don't need to like get into like a program where you're gonna work your way for 10 years and then all of a sudden you're gonna find the sunshine like no it's quicker than that like it, <laughs> it's like it's a mindset. Like, just embrace that things are new and that you can walk out of the cage and start yeah. ex start exploring. Like, it's as simple as that. Yeah, and I think hopefully people more and more, I, and I do feel people more and more are getting it, you know. And I, I actually feel that also we need to be doing and pushing the limits like the people we were talking about, um, you know, that – we can push the limits of the way we experience reality. Um, we can be like these people who can drink. Well, I'm not saying drink poison and see what happens. I'm not, I'm not but you know, you got to really know yourself to be able to do that. Like, I know you got to know yourself really good. Push your limits. Start like you know, start a kindergarten, whatever, where you need to start. But you know, start doing that. Maybe, maybe see if you can move. I mean, I'm always dreaming. I'm always dreaming that I'm moving things with my mind, but something happened to me when I was young because I could move things with my mind, but I think the programs came in and they shut me down or whatever. So, but, you know, it, you don't have that ability currently. Well, I have kinetic ability currently, but I can't control it again. So it's like, I have weird things that happen. Like my mystifier will just turn on on its own or like the TV or, you know, kinetic stuff happens or I'll move things without thinking about it like so the pen will fly off but I'm not really like thinking about it yeah um so it's gone that route so it's it's on its own subconscious level kind of doing its own thing but I still haven't been able to access it to control anything not like how when I was young and I think something happened that it was um something was done to me to to make everything dormant on the conscious level yeah so yeah. but and that's where i say i think we sh should be um testing ourselves and pushing whatever limit and just seeing if we can if we can start just because space is an illusion all of this is an illusion so really everything's an energy but nothing's gonna happen unless we start playing with it yeah I got to wrap this up Lada, uh, soon, um, but I wanted to end with, from my end, uh, this guy that I used to follow. I forget his name, but he's this tall, bald, like white, like skinhead looking dude, like enlightenment guy, guru guy. Yeah. He, he has a lot of followers. He has like two, no, he has like 500,000 on YouTube. But uh, he went, he went to, when I, I, I kind of stopped watching him, but when, when, when I was watching a video, he went to like a meditation retreat where he was silent for like five days. Or 10 days, I don't remember, but at the end of it, he was talking to the guy that led the class, and the guy was asking him, like, well, what did you get out of it? And he said, you know, I was sitting here, like, looking at this tree across the way, and I, it struck me that there wasn't anything behind the tree, like, there wasn't anything behind the tree. And if you get that, like, if you can look out and you understand what I, what I mean by that, it's like... Yes, it's two dimensional. Like it's on, yeah. it's sitting on top of your eyeball. There's not any distance whatsoever. Yeah, totally. And that's just this realm. It's not saying yet yeah, that feels constricting to think about, but that's just this particular little like thing that we're experiencing here. It's not to say that there aren't thousand other opportunities or things, you know, but you have to explore this one first before you can graduate kindergarten, basically. 
and yeah. you know, go go play yeah. in a bigger sandbox or something, you know? I love that. That's um yeah, I love that. I totally love that because that was my experience of everything here when I was little. It was it was like that, two D. It was literally yeah. like because what, 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 dis- what is distance? It's tiny objects, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> the mountain is like sitting literally on top of your eyeball. Like there isn't a... It's just right no. there. That's brilliant. Hmm, you don't remember his name. That's... I can probably remember his name. <laughs> he was He was just like this... He doesn't look like he should be any type of... Doing any type of that kind of thing. <laughs> he, oh, looks, <laughs> he looks like a... He, he looks like a KKK member. I, I love not judging a book by its cover because you really never know. Yeah. I love I love judging books by their cover, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm, you know that's. Um, I mean, I'm not mean about it, but you know, it's fun. No, too, but, but I mean, there's truth to both sides, right? Not judging and judging because I mean, I've had I've had experiences where I I thought and I was expecting something entirely different and got the entirely opposite effect from somebody that I least expected it from and then those that I expect something from fuck you up you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean it's judging whichever way you look at it like <laughs> it is yeah th- there's this there's this I do have to go but there's this woman that <laughs> she wrote this look up this thing it's, it's called judge your neighbor workshop worksheet like that was her thing Okay. Like, her whole deal is like, look, we judge each other from here to kingdom come. That's what we've been doing since we first set foot. All it is is judging. There's no such there's no such thing as non-judgment. Like, if you're really non-judgment, then you wouldn't be a person. Like, it would just be, you would be the infinite. Yep. There, yep. This is judgment. It's, this it's, is judgment. Yeah. I love, and, and it's true, because we can't lie, because this is, the, this is the basis by which we experience all things. It is based on... Judging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's like nice judging, and then there's like, yeah, you're a you're a black man, so I don't like you. So let's like let's yeah. make you feel like shit and throw you in jail and all this other nonsense. Like, but do do you realize that the the judgment has a lot to do with how we experience ourselves in creation? So when we're sensitive to let's say lies or liars, when we're sensitive to imposters, when we're sensitive to things that we feel innately that it's it's doing some kind of harm it's a way that we are relating to creation within ourselves and what and and what we want to create yeah well because all of those guys out there they are kind of like uh your your toolbox like it's they're part of your your box of crayons like they're a crayon that you can sit there and paint your reality with so like it if you have kind of like a dirty box of crayons and they're all broken and (laughs) You know, like, they don't color and stuff like that. It's like, I, I'm supposed to paint the picture, but, like, where's my, you know, like, where's where's my really nice, big, clean uh, canvas and, you know, like, all these colors and stuff. Exactly. So, like, we just got to work, you know, we have some work to do, but I, I you know, I feel like, I feel like uh, the cage door is open and uh, it's it's just, just do it or don't do it. Like, don't sit there and whine about it forever. Like, either yeah. either create or don't create. It's it, The door literally is open. And I love what, and I love how Og put it. I love that he said it is like, you know, the cage door is open, mm-hmm. and there's nothing holding you back. <laughs> there isn't. Go try it out. Like, have Go an idea. It. Have an idea pop into your head. You know. Find the fears. You know, all the blocks, and then just go try to do the idea and see if the fears yeah. and blocks stop you from doing it. Yeah. If they don't, then there you go. The cage door is open. And if they do, then you know what the fear is. Go track down the origins because you don't need it anymore. You don't need all that narrative. Yeah, right, right. I, I do have to go, Lauda. I got to run. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on. This was really fun. This is fun. I have, met, I have met another. I've met like the third one. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. Yeah. It feels like, like old hat to us. Yeah, yeah. You, you'll, you can come back on. I'll, we'll, uh, we'll do it again in the future. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Lada. Bye. Well, see you next time. <laughs> see you next time. If I can figure out how to close this thing. Okay. Nope. Ah, there we go.